Angular is changing a lot lately, and soon with the arrival of signal-based components it will be like a brand new framework, although it will still be fully backwards compatible. And one of the major players in this new signal-based Angular ecosystem is going to be NGRX Signals and, more specifically, NGRX Signal Store. In this video we are going to get a quick guided tour on this NGRX Signal Store new state management library where I will focus on the new intriguing concept of Deep Signals. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. So what is NGRX Signal Store? NGRX Signal Store is part of the NGRX Signals package that contains here a series of utilities that I think that are going to play a crucial role in the Angular Signals world. And one of them is for sure Signal Store. So Signal Store is a state management solution that allows you to build your applications using the store pattern but instead of using RxJS, you are using signals to store your state. However, it also has RxJS integration, so let me know if this is something that you would like me to cover on future videos. For this video, let's give you a quick demo of what this signal store looks like. In the case of our demo application, we are going to be using signal store to implement a centralized store. So the first thing that we do, as always, is to define the content of our store. We can see that we have here a to-dos array, a loading indicator, a filter that contains here which filter is selected, and an authentication object that contains a user, a name, and some roles. All right, so this is the state, then we're going to define here the initial state. Just as an example, I'm filling in here the user with some default data. Normally, in a production application, this would come from uh, JWT, for example. Now that we have defined our initial state, let's go ahead and let's define our store. This is an Angular injectable service. We created using here the signal store factory function, and I have passed in here the provided in root dependency injection configuration. Now, I don't have to, and this way you would be able to pass it anywhere that you want. So, for example, if you would like to get this injected in a component, you could, for example, go here to the providers of your component and you could pass in here your to-dos store. And this way you would inject the uh, service at the level of your component. But in the particular case of this store, I have passed in here this configuration provided in root, which makes this a global singleton. So you can inject it anywhere in your application. And I think that in general, this is how you're going to be using the NGRX signal store in general for most cases. Now, we have passed it here the initial state. So now with this, our service is ready to be injected. For example, I have here a to-dos list component and I can already go ahead and I can inject the to-do store here in this component and use it. The thing is, at this moment, this store only has state. It doesn't have behavior yet. So if you check here the implementation of the state, you have here the with methods API that we are using to add some behavior to our store. We are going to define here a factory function and notice that if we need a service like the to-do service that allows us to get data from our backend, we can grab it by using the inject function very convenient. Next, we are going to return here as the output of this factory function an object. This object here contains properties that are store behavior methods. Load all is a property of this returned object that is a function that can be called to grab all the to-dos from the backend. So if you check here our application component and you scroll down, we are injecting here the store using the inject function and notice that we are calling here load to do's. This load to do's async function is calling here the store using load all. And notice that I'm using the async await syntax. You can also use RxJS. I will cover that in later videos. 
right now let's go back here to our uh, load all implementation and see what it looks like so this load all function is meant to turn on the loading indicator that you see here at the beginning when the application gets restarted then we are going to call our backend and we're going to grab our list of to-dos that you see here and then we are going to save that in the store and to modify the content of our store we are using the patch state api as you can see here right now i am passing here partial versions of the state object there are other ways to update the state i will cover that on future videos so now we have defined our load all behavior method so we are ready to inject our store here for example in our application root component so we have injected the store here and now here on ng on init we're going to call here load to tools and this is going to call our store and it's going to invoke the load all behavior method now load all is going to fetch the data from the backend save it in the store and then other parts of the application such as for example the to-dos list component are going to grab the store and are going to pass the to-dos here to the template we can see it here if we scroll down that we are accessing the store filtered to-dos and we are looping through them and displaying it here on the screen. If you are curious to see how this filtered to-dos property has been created, you can check it here in the definition of the store. So I have here other behavior methods very similar to load all, such as add to-do, delete to-do, etc. And here is where I have defined the filtered to-dos this is a computed signal i'm using the angular core computed api to create here a derived signal that is based here on the to do's so whenever the to do's array gets changed this filter to do's is going to get a new value that is going to get emitted and propagated here to the to do's list now if you are curious to see how these methods were built one by one i have a long form tutorial here on the channel it's this one here it's over one hour where i build this whole to do application step by step and i explain in detail each and every one of these methods together with the with computed definition of filter to do's but right now in this particular video i want to focus on the concept of deep signals Let's go back to the initial definition of our state and ask ourselves a fundamental question. Why is this called a signal store? It's very simple. It's called a signal store because this store automatically turns every single property inside its state into a separate signal. And you might ask yourself, why is this interesting? This is important and useful because different parts of your application are going to consume different parts of your state right for example here the to do's list is only going to be interested probably on the to do's array it won't be interested in the authentication object so in that case this to do's component here can subscribe to the to do's by consuming here this signal so here i'm consuming the filter to do's but i can also consume the to do's directly so i am consuming this signal here directly on the to do's list template this is going to tell angular once signal components are available that this component is interested on this specific signal of the signal store and not on any of the other signals so the component is only going to get updated it's dumb it's only going to get updated if a new value of the to do's signal gets emitted if on the other hand the to do's remain constant and a new value of the authentication signal is emitted then the to do's component knows for sure that it doesn't need to be updated now that we understand what a signal store is let's talk about what are deep signals so an example of a deep signal is for example here the authentication user the name property this has a signal associated to it this is a deep signal let me show you how this works i'm going to head over here to the application component and let me add here an h2 tag 
And let's say that we want to access the username. Let's add here an expression. I'm going to access our store and we can access here the store authentication property. And let me show you what this looks like by importing here the JSON pipe. And here we can see the content of the authentication signal. Notice that because it's a signal, we need to invoke it like a function in order to access its latest value. Now, how about if we want to display just the username and not the whole JSON object? Well, let's remove the JSON uh, pipe and let's go ahead and let's access here the user.name and we are going to access here the name signal. And as you can see, now we are printing just the name. And this name signal, this is an example of a deep signal. So a deep signal is a signal here in our store that is created automatically in the deeply nested property inside our state. If you check here the documentation of signal store, we're going to see that for each state property, a corresponding signal is created and the same applies to nested state properties and those deeply nested signals are going to be generated lazily on demand. So if we go back here to our store, these shallow properties here, to do's, loading, filter and off, for each of these properties, a signal gets automatically created whenever the store gets initialized. But for any nested state properties, there is going to be a deep signal created on demand the first time that we try to access that signal using this syntax here, like we have used in our application component. Notice that we have here an error indicated in the template. This is just WebStorm that doesn't know yet how to handle NGRX signals, but this code works perfectly. There is no error here on the Angular CLI. As you can see, this notion of a deep signal is very useful and powerful, and you might be led to believe that you do need to use NGRX signal store in order to benefit from this deep signal concept. Now, that is not the case. You don't need to use a centralized store solution. You don't need to create a signal store. I'm going to show you in my next video how to use this notion of a deep signal and of a state signal object without having to use a store. So make sure that you subscribe here to the Angular University YouTube channel so that you don't miss that other video. I'm also thinking about covering the integration with RxJS and signals and other signal related topics. So please leave me a like if you think that the video was helpful and that you liked it. And if you are looking to learn Angular in general, check out here my courses in the Angular University. A lot of the material is free. Any of the material that does not have a P of Pro, you can watch for free without signing in to the website. If you are looking for the coverage on signals specifically, you can find it here on the Angular Core Deep Dive course. If you scroll down here at the bottom, you're going to find here a one hour section covering signals in detail. Here it is. So I hope that you have enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what other content you would like to see here on the channel. Cheers everyone and I will see you next time.